Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. Today, hey, I'm going to explore, try to, to for myself, to, 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 to reevaluate fiction books for resale. If you've watched my channel at, at any for any length of time, you know that I really specialize in probably over 90%, maybe 95% uh, of what I sell are nonfiction. It's niche kind of, you know, it's history, it's, uh, you know, it's hobbies, it's transportation, it's, it's, you know, manuals, it's, it's nonfiction stuff. And I've often said that for me, I think that the, the big win is, is, you know, if I had to give you a takeaway, it's to look at non, nonfiction hardback is where, you know, I make most of my resell, you know, uh, scores, right? But that's not to say that, that fiction can't be profitable. But, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, is when you go into a thrift store or, you know, any, whatever your resale venue is, you have to separate the wheat from the chaff. And, you know, if you have all these, these bookshelves of books, so many of them are fiction and a lot of them are populated with what I would call the mass market fiction or authors that are very prolific. These are like the James Pattersons, um, Stephen King, um, David Bodalci, um, you know, there's J.D. Robb, Janet Ivanovich, Clive Cussler. And so what I want to do on this video is I want to go through eBay sold comps and let's look at these authors, right? I want to look at Clive Cussler, uh, W.E.B. Griffin, James Patterson, Tom Clancy, John Grisham, J.D. Robb, uh, Janet Ivanovich, David Baldacci, and Stephen King, who is, I believe, the exception to all of the mass market fiction type things. Um, but I want to look at books in there that they, you know, th their series, look at where there's value there, things that might might be easy to find, relatively easy anyway, right? So, and it's it's some one thing, it's just for you as viewers to understand and to, to, to train your eye. But this one's really for me too, to evaluate and keep in mind that Hey, there's there there's potential there in fiction too, and and I know that a lot of people sell fiction, and they sell fictions in bundles or lots, and they make they make good good money off that, and that's just not been my niche. So that's something I want to learn, and I'm kind of you know pressing myself to be open minded about, and you know if you're there, hey, look around, I'll take profit wherever I can get it, right? So what we're gonna do is it's uh, I've got a bunch of it's you know it's part of one of the longer videos I've done because there's a lot of information. I'm going to scroll through sold comps, talking about these different authors, series. We're going to drill down into some of that and, you know, kind of try to identify, you know, key books in series or, or you know, things to, to take away and, and dig deeper and learn about. Um, so we'll do that. And then I'll come back at the end for closing, wrap-ups, observations, and, and, and we'll just uh, go from there. So hopefully you enjoy this. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Uh, I uh, appreciate the channel support, you know, comments are, are welcome, you know, likes, all that stuff, you know, paying some tribute to the, to the YouTube algorithm, keep pushing the channel and, and I appreciate that support. So again, you guys keep watching, I'll keep making these and, you know, if you like this format, we'll do some more of them. So, all right, I'm on break away and go through kind of just the screen grabs, right? And, and I'm narrating it just, this is real time as I go and then I'll come back for the closing stuff. So see you in a second. All right, so we're gonna research fiction books. And what I really, in this video, it's kind of like, I'm looking for things to train my eye on, on real popular authors that you're gonna see a lot for. So let's let's just look first at um, Clive Cussler, right? He's really prolific. Uh, just typed in his last name. Um, you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do minus, I'm gonna do minus signed. Um, that we don't no, I don't want it to be signed. I want to say I'm trying to exempt things that are signed. Let's uh, let's turn on uh, price is sort high and turn on sold items. Okay, so and then we're going to just go into fiction and nonfiction books here. So I should be so I've got sold items turned on. I'm I'm searching on Clive Custler here. Let me try to I'll try to zoom in. Let's see, let's go the other other direction. So maybe if you work on your phone, you can see this a little little better. But it's uh, again, Clive Custer minus sign. I've got I'm sorting high to low, um, just in the books category, and I've 
with this, I'm trying to just say things that are, if you find something that's signed, obviously I would buy it, right? So let's just go through. Um, you're going to see a lot of things, I think, with these. What I've noticed is, you know, book sets, right? Um, in this case, there's 85 of his Dirk Pitt, Numa, Fargo, Bell, all these characters that he's got. I mean, that's, that's only like $3 each, right? So I guess if you got a big box of those for a quarter, each or 50 cents each. I don't know. That's a lot of, that's a lot of space and time for 85 of them, but I'm looking for individual books here. So this is kind of cool. You know, this is one of his early, uh, Dirk Pitt books, Iceberg, the 1975 first is 275. That's really cool. I like that cover too. Um, raise the Titanic first edition hardcover. That one um, is higher than at least they're higher than I expected. It looks like it's in pretty good condition. Um, okay, there's Serpent. Again, this is uh, this is a newer book of his, I believe. Not sure about that one. That's interesting. Okay, uh, let's drill down on that one. See what it. See if it gives us any details on it. Uh, oh, it's a custom hardcover. That's okay. I don't think this one was published in hardcover. And what's happened now is someone has has taken a book. Um, yeah, it wasn't issued in hardcover, and they've taken a full size paperback and they put made it into a hardcover. So this isn't really a hardcover book as you're going to find. It's so another Race of Titanic, uh, first edition, 150 bucks. Um, blue gold. Again, that's a custom. I don't like that. Um, kind of messing with our data. Okay. So you see a lot of, of, of book sets again, here's a different iceberg. Um, I think that first other one could have been maybe a UK version. Um, this is the first, I think the first Dirk Pitt was Mediterranean caper. Um, but they you know, get into this night probe. I've actually got this one in my, my personal collection. Um, okay. So I think what we're seeing here is on Clive Custler is really, uh, as, as I keep scrolling down through, through here, you know, if you find early editions, you know, iceberg Mediterranean caper, raise the Titanic first editions of those. We're talking, these are like the 1975, 76, 77 type books. Um, I'm still just, I'm kind of scrolling down here to see, you know, the, the fall off on these. You're seeing most people are, are selling, you know, lots of books. See, so here's 21 hardback books for 20 bucks. So <clears throat> it's just, you know, here's a raise of Titanic. Uh, maybe it's not as, as, um, a good a condition, $45. So I think the takeaway here on Clive is that you've got, you know, here's, you know, again, there's nine of them for $29. You can do some stuff in sets, but I think on him, if I saw first editions or hardbacks of the early ones, and, and that would be Mediterranean Caper, Iceberg, Night Probe. Um, you see there was a Cyclops even. There's one of his I haven't seen. It's interesting. It's Deep Six. I, I've seen it quite a bit. Let's type in Deep Six and see what comes up on it. Uh, $25. So I think that's the takeaway for, for Clive is that you want these these early, you know, there's, there's four or five early titles to remember. Okay, here's Deep Six. We've got, um, we've got Iceberg. That one. There's a couple of variants here. There's there's this hardcover edition, even this one. That's uh, I thought that that was the UK printing, but I don't know. It's um, you know Mediterranean Caper. That's that's another one. So that's that's definitely three. You know they made a movie out of one of his called a Sahara, right? Let's see what that one's bringing. If you've got if there's any. 15 bucks, 10 bucks, you know, you know, I'm really wanting to try to find stuff, you know, $5. I really want to find something that's got that, you know, 25 to $30 region. So I think that, you know, that's the thing for Clive is that we're, we're talking about the early four or five, I would say, um, like I said, let's see what do one more Cyclops. There's, but there's four or five early ones that if you can get the first editions for, 
I think that, you know, you have a shot at getting, you know, getting anywhere from 15 to $30 for sometimes, especially raise the Titanic and, um, raise the Titanic is one that if you get in really good condition, if you find it, it's, you know, there's some of those that get up pretty high, but you know, you're in that 30 to $40 range. Okay. So now let's uh, move on to, let's, uh, um, just, just, just say Grisham, John Grisham, right? Um, I'm going to say signed. Let's take John Grisham out. Uh, let's see, make sure it kept my filters. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try to take off book lots too. Um, okay. The firm, or that when it came out, um, got the firm, and then there was a, a time to kill, right? Um, early firms, 1991. It's hard to believe it's that, that long ago. Looks like they're in pretty nice condition. Um, 70 bucks, 60 bucks. You see, okay, a time to kill. This was the, um, this cover, I've sold this one before. Um, actually, this is one I have sold in fiction. It's, um, I think this was, I forget the publisher, but it has this, this brown cover. It's very distinctive. Let's, um, let's see if it gives the publisher. Winwood. that's right. I couldn't remember. Winwood Press, which it's very noticeable by this. Uh, some, you see some of the Time to Kills do not have this brown cover. Um, you can see 50 bucks. It's got some, some dust jacket wear, if you can see on that. So yeah. Okay. Let's, let's I think, so we got the firm, a time to kill. Those are pretty, pretty good ones there. This is, it's interesting. That's a Theodore Boone. That's, that's like a, I think a kid kind of, uh, young detective kind of thing. I think, um, yeah, his, we're falling off pretty quick on those as well, right? I think John Grisham, other than selling in lots, <clears throat> I think the two biggest ones you can take away from him, as I'm just scrolling through here, is if I can find, you know, it's an autographed one here on Calico Joe, you know, is is The Firm. If you can get first edition, early edition, so, you know, The Firm, and, you know, a, a time to kill. I think that's, Oh, let's see. There's the other, the other cover for a time to kill kind of falls into this kind of firm cover. It's got kind of like the marble looking background. This, I think the first true first edition was the Winwood press one, um, the Brown. So I think that's, you know, early, early edition on him. That's the way to go. Um, it makes me think in that time, same time period, let's look at, uh, Tom Clancy. You know, this was all the Jack Ryan type type books. Hunt for Red October kind of is the one that first comes to mind. Um, I've got a copy of this uh, Hunt for Red October, not a first first. Mine's like a first edition, maybe like third print or something. Um, I used to see these a lot. I don't see them much anymore. Um, and let's let's drill down on this one to see if 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 this lister gave us any um, print type, something we can decipher, you know, sometimes on these, yeah, see on, on this, there's, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's, there's, this, they're calling this a first, first, and there's no, there, there's no print history, right? It's all, there's, it's just nothing there. So I, I would do some research. <clears throat> I do some research on that listing, before, you know, I said it was a first, first, um, hunt for red October or it's early one feeling pretty good about, you know, there's, they, there's some fall offs. Um, it's like a nice condition. I think condition's the key on a lot of these two hunt for red October seems to be one of the big ones. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's autographed. Some of all fears. It was, you know, later in the Tom Clancy, uh, Jack Ryan series. Let's see here. Go through some more. Yeah, so the, you know, I think that I'm, I'm surprised. Red Storm Rising. This was one I was wanting to see. That 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 was around the time I remember reading this way back in the day. It's kind of a standalone. It's not part of the um, Stu Clancy Red Storm. It's not part of the Jack Ryan. It's kind of a standalone standalone series. Okay. There's the first printing for 20 bucks, 24. 
So that's that's not bad. You know, if you see this at a thrift store, it's in good shape, and you get that for a buck, and you can sell it for, you know, 19 or 20 that's that's not bad. You see that they're falling off, so you're not going to be guaranteed that 20 There's some here that are 14 or 15 Again, I think condition, you know, they they, they fall off. You can see it's, it's sometimes confusing, right? Because you get both of these for ten bucks. That's that's kind of just the way it is sometimes. I think, but okay. So I think Red Storm Rising and you know is is a potential, but really, from what it looks like, this Patriot Games was another early one of his. I think. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Patriot Games. Okay, there's a first first thirty dollars. Um. 25 that's not that's not too bad that's that's actually pretty good too i think you find these in good really good shape in their first first and by the way i mean our first printing first edition and you gotta do a little bit of research on this but let's hit one of these and, and maybe it'll show we'll see what the print line looks like on it um sometimes sometimes you have to tell them by price but you know, this is, it's not always the case, but you know, this is, this is, I've got some videos out on this. It's, you know, you really just have to do research, but you know, in general, you pick these up and if it has the full number line one through 10, then you know that, you know, that's a pretty good indication that that's a, you know, a, a first printing, you know, if it, if it comes down where it's had the three, it's like a third printing. So you're, what you're really wanting to look for on these is, something that you know that says first edition and has this full number line so that you get the first first so okay so i think tom clancy again we're seeing kind of a similar theme here you know patriot games uh uh maybe red storm rising and hunt for red october in early editions of it um you know another thing guy that i see there's tons of them out there is james patterson right i mean this dude he writes uh, I think it's like a book a week. Now he's got all these people that, that, you know, come out with him. Let's just put his first name on there. Try to call these out. You know, he did all the Alex cross stuff, right? Um, okay. We're seeing lots 29. These are like all the Alex cross. It's hard to believe there's 29 of his Alex cross. I, I don't women's Mur murder club. You know, he's a lot of people that write with him now. Um, so there's book lots. Okay, along came a spider. I think that was the first Alex Cross. Let me go up here and take a lot. If we can call this down where people put that. Okay, so true first, you know, let's again, let's see what the number line looks like on that. See if they, you know, if they put photos of it. Um, don't know if they, oh, here we go. Sorry. Let's go to the PC code. Sometimes there we go. Yeah, it's hard to see in this. Um, trying to zoom in there, but yeah, it has the full. It goes ten to one instead of one to ten, but same same sort of thing. Again, you got to do some research on those first editions. It's not always all right. Thomas Berryman number. This was kind of before I think when his super early books. Um, you know, there was there was one of these. It could have been this one. There was one of these. I know he was on record saying that. He wish he had not written it because he really didn't have his craft perfected. But so Thomas Berry number, I've never seen that in the wild. Um, I think that shows how hard it is to, to find it. Um, Along came a spider, which I think is the first, again, is the first um, Alex Cross. He did do all this maximum ride stuff. Um, I think, which could be a different, it's kind of a different little genre you know, pick for the James Patterson, but man, I'm seeing, I mean, the price of these, of course we're getting into a lot of Australian, the price of these look like they really have fallen, fallen off here. Let's, you know, I know he did, he's done so much stuff. The women's book club. Let's, let's go down, see if we can pick up. And we're Jack and Jill kiss the girls. These are all early ones. So I don't think you're, you're going to be, that's like 10 bucks, 10 bucks Australian, 29. All right. So let's, let's, let's kind of call some of these. Let's, uh, let's, let's put spider on here. This is a, oh, why it's not getting my, it's got an error, real time error. Okay. 
Um, I don't think, I think it lost my sold. Hey, you know, I don't, it's what you see is what you get with me. I don't, <laughs> don't do a lot of editing for better or worse. Um, okay. Long came a spider. Okay. You're 25. This is what I'm looking for, right? Cause this is, this is something you might be able to see. There's a large print, large print one. And I see, you know, they they fall off. It's, it's one that I would, I would, if I found a really nice first, that's a paperback. I like to deal in the hardbacks. Uh, let's say it was Kiss the Girls. That's, um, and there's Jack and Jill. Some of the first, boy, that really, you know, there's a 29, some of them are 10. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one too on him. I think, you know, it's, it's those early, early Alex Cross. Let's, let's put in the maximum ride to see what, uh, the maximum, see what comes in there. Uh, there's a, you know, I remember those, you know, some of this angel experiment and, um, some of those back in the day, those are bringing about 10 bucks a piece is a lot. That's actually pretty, pretty good. You know, if you, if you run across a bunch of those, but I think you got to be able to stick them together. Um, yeah, they do graphic novels. Yeah, he's just got so much. He's so prolific. He just—I just, just don't—they they make millions and millions of his books, right? Um, okay, let's go to. Um, I don't, you know, I see a ton. I've never read any of. Um, what is it, Janet Ivanovich? Ivano. Let's just fucking type it. Um, yeah, I think she was Stephanie, the Stephanie Plum type. Let's take out, looks like people are doing them in book lots. Um, okay. See, these are, you get a bunch of these together, you can sell them as lots, but I'm not. Yeah. You know, finding just random single volumes, I'm just not seeing a bunch of big dollar ones. You know, this was her, I guess, she, yeah, she had the, did she do like, yeah, all of them have like a number. So let's type in what the, the first one would have had something one. I forget what it's called. I think they made a movie out of this one too. Yeah, one for the money. All right, there's a first printing for 30 bucks, 25 bucks. You get number one and two for 20. And they're falling off pretty quick. It's a tough one. I think, you know, maybe if you get one or two, one for the money or, or the, what was the second ones? Was it two for the show? Two for the dough. I think if you get those first editions, you might can do something with them. You know, you're not wanting to pay much for those. Let's see. Uh, there was JD Rob, right? Um, I take the, those out. I'll do minus sign on that. <clears throat> I see a lot of these on shelves. You know, very, another very prolific, not, ah, uh, yeah, this one just doesn't, I'm just not seeing huge upside on that. Um, let's, what's another, what's some other, oh, you go on the military space. What was the guy, the guy's name? It's like, uh, I don't know what it stands for. I've never read any of this stuff. Uh, W-E-B Griffin. We'll do minus sign on him as well. Let's look and see. Yeah, he did all the core. There was the core in the Brotherhood of War series. Um, now, I will say I have, so as a matter of fact, I can remember years ago selling some of the older, I found a couple of his older versions of this from the Brotherhood, and I do remember selling those now. It's been a long time. So there's six of them. It's like 20 bucks a piece. These are, the, I think, the older, you know, older first editions. Um, yeah, he had presidential agent was another one. Yeah, that's well, how many are there? There's eight of them uh, bringing 10 bucks a piece in a, yeah, it's tough. There's the core and it's all 10 of them for 56 bucks paperback. You know, I think that is a, that is a good point though. You know, you get somebody that's read through all these in paperback and you get, you could find, uh, that's, I mean, obviously that's a good way to do it, you know, as a book lot, somebody that's done a lot of reading 
Um, they read through the whole series. They're in paperback. You pick them up maybe at a yard sale for 50 cents each or, you know, at your thrift store or whatever. Um, maybe you get five bucks in them. You can throw 10 of those together and, and do 50 bucks. That's a, that's a decent way to do it. What's the, oh, this is the Brotherhood. Just a, looks like paperback newer ones. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, see, I don't know. These, these look like maybe paperbacks too. I think the hardback, the early hardback brotherhoods are probably, you know, the best value. Um, and it's kind of this, you know, monochrome kind of background. There was, there was one of the photos that's 20 bucks. That's not bad. That's actually a book club edition. That's probably where I'd look on, on, on web, W E B Griffin, whatever. Um, you know, so let's do, I want to do, um, what's his name? David Baldacci. Is that right? Is that how you say it? He's got a lot of books too. Let's see if there's any of his that jump out. And then we're going to, then I want to look at Stephen King, who I, I know is the exception. I, I like finding old Stephen King. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, that that's 18 of, it's books on CD even. That's crazy that that's 80, just 80 bucks. Those things are can be expensive. Yeah, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing seeing all, all of that. Now who wrote the um who wrote let me let me see. Who wrote um uh, the Bosch series? It's uh my backwards English. I'm just Michael Connolly. Let's look at him. All right, let's look at Conley. You know, they're doing that Bosch series. Actually, I, I enjoy it. It's on um, Amazon. I think Amazon Prime. Let's, let's see. Let's go up into books. 2,000 of them. This will be the Harry, a lot of the Harry Bosch. Um, I guess he did. I guess he did the Mickey Holler, the, the um, Lincoln Lawyer series too, right? Okay, so... Black Echo, he's one I think that you find early ones of his. <clears throat> oh, that's funny that we're getting the uh, Bosch machining, you know, from Bosch tools. Let's let's just go in here with let's to kind of do this. Is I thought one thing I had was filtering. I was trying to get fiction books, but uh, so Black Echo uh, that might have been the first. That might have been the first Harry Bosch novel. That's a one to look for, man. 126. That's awesome. The um, yeah. So let's. Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's do. Uh, let's put Bosch in the Conley and Bosch, and if it's the Harry Bosch series, see what we find. There's Black Echo, lots of book lots. Um, yeah, I think I think it's that theme, right? It's the if you can find the first, it's like the you know do a little research and find if it's a series, find what the the first one or two books are in the series and go from there. Let's let's look at Lincoln Lawyer. Type that in. I don't know if this, uh, I think he had one. I thought he had one called Lincoln Lawyer. It was like the first book in that series. Yeah, there it is. Oh, okay. Somebody sold one for 40 bucks. I'm not sure that holds. I'm not sure that's a universal truth, but I'm not seeing a lot of them. At least, you know, a lot of people are doing them by lots. There's an $18 one. That's not bad. You know, yeah, I think I've seen Lincoln Lawyer first edition. I might check it out. I think all these have to be in good shape. So, all right. So now let's go. I know this one, Stephen King. I'm going to do minus sign to, take, to try to get that off. Um, let's. All right. Starting off, I've never seen. I've known about this one for years. I've never seen it. You know, this was something he wrote originally. Is I think uh, Richard Bachman. This book, Rage, the paperback of this. $8,000. This is something I've never seen in the wild. Um, I've known about this one for years, but, um, you know, we're going to see first edition gunslingers all over the place. This is from the dark tower series. <clears throat> I've never seen this in a wild. Um, now I think what I want to show here 
that's it. That's a great one. That's a UK UK book. I mean, the early Stephen King, and I, and I have experience with this one. This is one I've sold. Or I've sold even even early the early book club editions, but you know I haven't sold you know two thousand dollars Salem's Lot or something. But I have sold um, first edition Stephen King's from some of his later stuff for you know. 50, 60, 70 dollars. Book club editions are often easy. You're seeing you're seeing a lot of these from you know the gunslinger, the rage, these high dollar ones. Here's a first edition of the shining. Now notice here, this is something you just have to learn and and do research on. Google it, look at eBay listings, but see they're putting this number in parentheses, this R49. That's gonna refer to a gutter code. Sometimes it's hard to tell if these things are first editions. But by gutter code, and we'll see if the if they actually showed photos of it. It's usually, you know, depending on who the publisher is, Doubleday, Random House, whatever, they will put. See, this says first edition. If you look on what the photo they saw, it says first edition, but you don't know if it's a true first. You have to do the research and see on this photo here. And I'm in the, let me zoom in. See, they do this R49. There's usually a page in the back of the book, like one or two pages from the back, that'll print this little code right on the gutter. And that's a gutter code. And there's some publishers that how you, it'll just say first first edition, but to find out if it's a true first first, first edition, first print, you have to do the research and figure out what the gutter code is. And these things mean, you, you can Google gutter codes double days and kind of see, you know, it's like a, got a month, year type thing, but um, it's something you just, you kind of just have to research, uh, as you go in addition, you know, regardless of whether it's a first true first, first, if I saw this and I didn't know the gutter code and I, and I saw this, uh, first edition, um, let me get here on the, again, I saw that this page said first edition and I got this 1977 first edition, no print lines. And I'm thinking, Okay, I know I got to do some more research to make sure it's a true first, first, first printing, first edition. But with this, I get this; it's in good shape. I get it for a couple of bucks. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the swing at it. You don't, you know, but you're gonna see. I, I think the you know the, we got night shift, shining, carry um, that that's autographed. The Doctor Sleep. It's a newer one. Um, what you know. These these early, you know, definitely these early Stephen King books can be exceptionally um, valuable. Let's look at <clears throat> let's look at some stuff like Misery. That was one um, I just saw and see what it. You know, these those are special. Let's see if there's any. Okay, that's one that's interesting. Yeah, so this says a unique slipcase on misery, but so I'm not sure what what that is. Let me. I'd like to see some more. You know, I'm trying to find something that maybe it's not. Oh, I hadn't seen these, uh, but I, I've bought a few of these here and there. But there's these red leather bound Stephen Kings from the Stephen King Library. If you ever seen any of these red leather ones, they always do good. I mean, you get them for two dollars, five dollars, probably even ten dollars on some of these. You can, you can sell them for 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 bucks. But yeah, you've got, uh, you know, Carrie's a good one. Here's, we call them early editions. Um, okay, I see the stand in there. You know, I even, okay, here's a first printing, super good condition, Misery for 70 bucks. Condition is going to be a big thing. We'll look at the stand. Um, stand is a good one. Yeah, I mean, there's a first, first. I find this one more in book club edition. Um, those are some new new printings, limited edition. But again, they're talking about gutter codes. But I, I, again, I find this one, I find the stand sometimes is book club editions. And, you know, if, let's just, you know, sometimes you see that it's BCE. And it's, um, you know, it's still, there's $150, a $60 one. It's... It's one that if I see the stand, uh, if it's just, as long as it's not ratted out, I get it. Um, okay, let's look. We saw that one, Dead Zone. 
you know, these are kind of some of his his earlier earlier works. I'm not think you're not going to get five. I don't know why this one went five hundred bucks. You're not going to get five hundred bucks for first edition Dead Zone. I don't. I don't think. Uh, but again, these are stuff like from the seventies, right? From the seventies, early eighties. If you can find first editions of these, um, you know the hardbacks. They are they're worth it. They're definitely good. All right, let's type in it. See what we see what we find on on it. Uh, there's a book club edition. I don't know. First edition book club. That's that's weird. Uh, Three hundred bucks. I don't don't know about that description. Um, but I'm thinking it. I mean, it's got some movies. It's got you know. I think they just did an, another one of it. Right. I'm not. Don't really watch horror stuff myself. But uh, definitely one. If you see any of those, let's look at uh, Firestarter. That's. Um, Okay. Oh, so here's somebody had some early, some early hard cover covers, put them together. Um, 400 bucks. Firestarter. Okay. I, I think that's, that's pretty re 70 bucks, 70, you know, 71. That's good. Okay. Um, you know, I know the shot, we saw the shining. Let's look at, uh, Carrie. You know, these, these are, again, are a lot of things he wrote in the seventies, right? I've sold book club edition of this one, this, this book. Um, now I'm going to say these first editions are not, you're not going to find them left and right, but it's something that you just keep, you know, the, I want to just type in book club edition. People that say that they're book clubs, you know, you're, you're more likely to find the book club editions just out in the wild, right? Uh, unless you get super lucky, but you know, here there's, there's four of them that people are saying are book club editions. You know, it's, uh, the Bachman books. I've, I've seen this one over the years. I've, I've seen it. I need to pay more attention to, to that. The Bachman books. Actually, the last one I found of this, I, I found out, I knew about, it, I was looking for it, but it, it had water damage. I was so disappointed. I picked it up and it had water damage. I hated that. So, you know, even the book club editions of these early kind of 70s kind of stories, right? The 70s early, we're talking Carrie, Shining, Firestarter, Dead Zone. Um, you're seeing Salem's Lot, uh, the Bogman books, you know, and of course, any of, I don't know, you know, I've I've had different success on the Dark Tower. I think that's a whole nother, a whole nother genre type thing, right? I mean, it's, if they're autographed, if there's different, there's so many different things on the dark tower, the gunslinger. Like I said, I've never, all my years, I've never seen this in the wild. Um, I see some of these later ones often the wolves of Kala, you know, this, the, the dark tower number seven, you know, but, um, you know, there's, there's some, there's some options there. So, okay, well, let's, um, I'm going to close this down and let's just go to some closing comments and, uh, try to c collect our thoughts here for the end. All right, so there's lots of stuff there, right? And I went through several authors. Um, again, Stephen King, David Badalci, uh, J.D. Robb, John Grisham, Tom Clancy, uh, was it Michael Conley, James Patterson, Webb Griffin, uh, W.E.B., whatever he's called, and then Clive Cussler. And I think one thing that I've, I concentrated on here, too, was hardback books. And I, I my observations are is, you know, all these guys, if you can get a bunch of their books cheap, right? You can put them in book lots, you know, or book bundles and potentially make money. You just have to get them. You need to be getting these things at 25 cents, 50 cents, you know, to be able to bundle and make money. But that was obvious that a lot of times bundle these mass market kind of authors, um, you know, they're, a lot of times they're bringing $3 each in bundles. And so that's why you need to get them cheap. If you go that route, I was trying to look at, at single volumes. And I do think hardback's the way to go on that. The big exception was Stephen King, right? I think Stephen King stuff, you find first edition, first prints of his, especially his early stuff from the seventies and early eighties, even through all the eighties, it's worth finding and looking at because you can get this stuff. If you can get this stuff for a dollar, two dollars, you might be able to, to get that 20 to $30 or higher on some of those. So Stephen King's, I think a total exception. A lot of these others, like Badalci, I didn't really see 
his, uh, JD Robb, um, you know, I didn't really, uh, Janet Ivanovich, I really didn't see maybe like Janet Ivanovich, if you get that Symphony Plum, one for the money or two for the dough, first edition hardback, you know, you might get in that 10 to $20 range. I think I saw like John Grisham concentrate on a time to kill and the firm. Those are the two big ones. First editions, especially that time to kill Winwood Brown edition. Um, Tom Clancy, I think it's early ones, Patriot games, red storm rising hunt for Rock, red October. Um, James Patterson. I think there is some potential there for his early Alex cross, like kiss the girls along came a spider. You know, those, I think, uh, Thomas Beerman number, which again, I've never found in the wild. Um, I think those are some of the ones for him that, that have good potential. And then Clive Kessler is interesting. I, I used to read Clive Kessler and then it becomes so routine, right? It was like, you have Dirk Pitt, you know, he gets captured, he escapes, he has a car chase, he escapes, he has the boat chase, he escapes, you know, it, it just kind of become his routine and I kind of fell out with him, but his early stuff I enjoy. And I think that's where his value is as well. The Mediterranean caper, uh, raise the Titanic, um, Cyclops, Iceberg. And I think that's, um, that's true on all these. Michael Conley, there was the, what was the, the, uh, the first Harry Bosch, what, what's that one? The, I can't remember the, the Black Echo or so anyway, I think maybe the first Lincoln Lawyer book, um, all these get, look for first, first, educate yourself on looking at number lines. Some of these, like some of the Stephen King, the early stuff, you got to, to start learning about gutter codes and, um, on the Stephen King stuff, even the early book club editions are fine. They are, they, they have resale, not as much as the first, first, but you're going to be able to get in that anywhere between 20 and 50 bucks on early book club editions. And then I think the final comment on that is on all these is that, um, condition, you know, probably with the exception of, again, Stephen King condition is you really, if they're ratted out, I think you're not going to be able to compete. And, and even if they're first editions on, on, on these mass market guys. So anyway, hopefully that gives you something to think about. I know that's probably even more to study and learn on, but that's part of what we do, right? You have to continue to learn. I, I, I try to do it too. Be a, well, they, they, they call it be a, a lifetime learner, right? Keep those neurons firing. So anyway, that's, uh, part of it's just give you some stuff for your eye. It was for me to, to learn things I'm going to be looking for. And, you know, some of these authors in these series, you know, to keep in my brain, what the first, first books in a character series are, you know, Alex Cross is a good example for, with James Patterson. And hopefully that'll help, you know, if I see them, man, I'm going to start looking at them. I'm going to, I see these books, I'm going to look at them. Hey, is that a first edition? And, uh, you know, especially if I can get it for a buck, two bucks, something like that, take a swing at it. It's, uh, it's worth it. So anyway, see cool, buy cool and, uh, list it so you can sell it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.